And we're back, Stripe Show podcast on a Thursday. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. Hope you're having a great week. Of course, on Thursdays, we like to uh, do a little instruction. Usually, you know, I'll have one of the uh, one of the teachers on with me uh, as we kind of break down anything and everything as it pertains to instruction. And uh, But this week, we got a special one, as I've been telling you. Guy sitting next to me, for those of you watching on video, uh, joins me here today. The first time that he's sat down and has done a media interview of this point in over three years as he puts his game back together. Smiley Kaufman, how you doing, man? Man, I'm good. I appreciate you having me on. So Yeah, no, I appreciate uh, you doing this. You know, you and I were talking and texting and I've been following your career and of course, uh, you know, all the way back to your days of uh, winning the Alabama Amateur. Let's go back to 2011, Smiley. How old were you then and the Alabama Amateur? 2011, I would have been, I would have been, I guess, 19. You were 19. Yeah, yeah 19. Wow. <laughs> then you went to yeah. LSU, right? LSU Tiger, you got there and uh, let's see, John Peterson, Andrew Loop, they were a little bit older than you were, but you had a nice... Uh, Nice college career at uh, LSU. Yeah. I tell kids all the time, you know, that, that are getting ready to go play college golf. I'm like, go and enjoy it because it's it's the best time of your life, isn't it? Yeah, it, it sure was. I mean, I both my parents played golf at LSU, and um, I dreamed of going to LSU. And you know, I was lucky to play for an awesome golf coach that taught me a ton while I was there. Um, really important in, um, in my development. You know, I did really. I was in and out of the the lineup probably most of my career at LSU. I was a super late bloomer. Um, I just kind of soaked up a ton of information while I was there. And when the light switch finally did turn on for me, I was able, it was kind of the perfect time because I was um, junior. It was my second semester of my senior year and uh, turned on the jets and kind of parlayed it into a ton of success early on in my career. Hey, you hear that a lot. The light goes on. You know, you know whose light just went on about two months ago? Scotty Shuffler. <laughs> yeah. He's always been dang good. I got a good Scotty story. So All right. that, uh, that junior, the, the summer before my senior year, um, I was an alternate for the U.S. Amateur. And I decided uh, I was going to go up as an alternate. I'd never played a U.S. Amateur. I played in a U.S. Junior and then was, you know, I just – always was just missing out at the USAM uh, and qualifying. So I go and caddy for one of my buddies who, who made it, Birmingham guy, Stuart Jolly, mm. and I went and caddy for him. And for the longest time, my ball mark, it was at, it was at the, uh, the country club, that squirrel logo. That was my logo for – I used as a ball marker forever because I loved seeing – I was like, I don't ever want to be a caddy again. Like, this, this was awful. But I, I really enjoyed um, – I really enjoyed caddying that that week in particular. Stewart played amazing, made match play, and he was probably qualified seventh. And then there was, you know, how they always have a big playoff for like mm -hmm. the last the last guys to get in. And Stewart draws Scotty Scheffler first round. And at the time, I knew he was a stud coming up to Texas. I'm like, this guy, it's good. And his sister was caddying for him, and I still to this day I was. We text every time after Scotty wins, Stuart and I, I'm like, that's just, that would just turn out to be a really poor draw on London, buddy. And we <laughs> always say it, it's like just a bad draw. And he had him beat and we lost an extra holes. And I've never, I've never been more defeated for a player as well as a caddy. I got out caddied by his sister. And uh, <laughs> so we both lost. <laughs> have you caddied since? I am. I don't think I've caddied since. Um, <laughs> I did lose the ball marker somewhere though. So I got that's what I always tell when I would work with some, you know, when I was teaching full time and, and I was helping some players here and there. And I said, look, I'll help. I'm not, I'm not going to travel. I don't want to do that. Um, and I'm not going to caddy, you know, yeah. my brain is not wired for caddying. <laughs> it is really hard work. Yeah. And I'm not going to caddy. And I ended up having to caddy a couple of times for Fred Funk and I was awful. And he told me, you're right. You'll never caddy for me again. So I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, yeah it's it's tough sled man oh man i'm a good it's green tough reader, work though. yeah i'm a good green yeah. reader so i'm a good caddy <laughs> so you turned pro 2014 um 
you come out and you're on the Corn Ferry tour. It was the web.com tour uh, yep. when you played. Mm-hmm. And uh, 2015, you, you were having some success. Uh, you ended up six on the money list and yeah. you win at a place that I know very well, the United Leasing Championship, Evansville, Indiana, on a place called Victoria National. Let me tell you something, people. If you win at Victoria National, you have golfed your ball, especially in 2015, because they have gotten it a little bit easier since off the tee. But when you played Smiley, let me tell you something, you had to hit the ball straight off the tee. I did. I hit it really straight that week. Um, That was probably one of the best tournaments I've ever played as far as Mm. having my A game. Um, We had tons of wind. It was about this time of the year here in April. Um, and you know how cold and windy it can be in Indiana that time of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just drove it so well. And on Sunday, I think I had an eight shot lead with like eight to go. And I think I got it down to three. Adam Long was pushing me, but I was, I was trying to throw up with myself. And that back night of Victoria national was like, yeah, you got to keep it, you know, keep it in front of you. But I was lucky to go on and win and, uh, propel me to a lot of, uh, early success out there. It was fun. Yeah, so you you go on from there. You get your, your card. You turn pro 2016. You pick up a win quickly, right? The Shriners. Yep. Uh, Hospital Children's Open. You shoot a little yeah. 61 in the final round. I mean, things were... Let me ask you this before we before we get to that. When you're on the Corn Ferry Tour and, and you were rolling, you were playing well, you were confident, in your mind, take us back to that point. Did you feel like, hey, it's just a matter of time before I get to the PGA Tour? Did you feel like, I have what it takes. I'm going to get to the Tour I can yeah. feel it. I think when I got out on the Corn Ferry Tour, I knew my game stacked up extremely well. Um, you know, it, I was the guy that once I started believing myself in like all my shots that I had and how far I hit it, how well I putted it, my game really fit well well on, on, the, uh, on that tour. Um, and when I was out there, I really felt like it was just a matter of time before I was able to put four rounds together. Um, and it happened really quickly. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but uh, it was well, a good well, ride. Take us, for... take us back to those days and, and, and tell my audience, like, what, like, analyze your game when things were really good. I mean, because you were, yeah, we're going to get sure. to this we'll get to, really we'll get nice run of golf where you get your win, you're, you're right there to win the Masters. And I mean, like, explain your game. I mean, long, yeah. I mean, I know you're a great putter, right? But yeah. kind of explain the rest of your game during, during that stretch. Yeah, I was uh, an extremely aggressive player, um, drove the ball, hit a lot of drivers. Um, I didn't hardly ever hit too many three woods, three irons. I hit a ton of drivers. Um, I was really, uh, really strong on the par fives. Um, I always felt the strength of my game was just leaving on the correct side of the holes on par fives. And my short game was very, a really good short game. Um, I've, I've worked with James Seekman for my entire life. Mm. Um and I've always felt that has been a strength in my game. Um, and it kind of, I guess for me, the corn fairy was a great place for me because you really need to make a lot of birdies out there. And I've always felt if you can get me on the green the same amount of times or more than every, you know, than the rest of the field, then I'm going to, I'm going to be up there in the top 10 just because I'm, I'm just such a good putter. So you, 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 you go and you win the, the Shriners. 61 in the final round, by the way. You had to wait like I remember this, Smiley. It's a couple hours, yeah. <laughs> you had to wait like two hours, didn't you? I remember I remember yeah, this was, like it was yesterday. It was awful. <laughs> but it was it was fun when it was over. <laughs> it was totally worth it, right? It was <laughs> yeah. So then you, you go on, you have a great masters. Um, you know, you're yeah. you're in the final group with your good friend Spieth, who um was the defending champ, right? Who won yeah. back in yeah. uh, 2015. Things didn't go your way on Sunday. You shot 81. You finished T29. Yeah. But nonetheless, you you know, you're you're off and running, right? Yeah. And I, it's crazy. Yeah. So so take us. We, we just had the Masters, right? Yeah. I was Last there week. Too. We went there for a couple of days. First time back. You were there. Yeah. Okay. First time back. It was fun. First time back at Augusta since uh, 2016. Um, I, I did one golf trip um, in, in, in between, but first okay. time seeing the event live. One of your favorite favorite courses? Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just it fits my game so well, and it's such a it's such a cool piece of property. How often do you think about that final round with Jordan? Um, there's just so many weird things that happened that day. Um, it just from I just remember so much of it. 
uh, from just uh, being just like me being an inch away all day with my putter, um, mm. where I shoot three over on the front with three three putts and a missed short opportunity on eight. And Jordan shot, I think, three under on the front. And I have really felt like, from a ball striking perspective, he didn't out ball strike me on the front. Now, things like eventually started going sideways for him on obviously on 12, on 12. but I just like, I, I just couldn't, um, I just couldn't get any momentum going that day. Um, I just really struggled. He was putting first all day and made all of his putts. And when you haven't been in an atmosphere like that, where, you know, it's almost like, it's like they, they apply all the pressure, you know, mm-hmm. you played at home, but like, you don't have it with, you know, such big galleries that are, you know, hooting and hollering and then moving on to the next hole. And you still got a five footer to putt. And I just didn't, I wasn't able to lock in and uh, make those putts that day. Um, but just everything from then the back nine thing. And I'm like, I'm at least get to see the winner of the masters and experience that moment that I can always tell, you mm-hmm. know, my kids one day. Um, and then obviously what happened, happened. And, you know, Jordan and I became really, really, He's one of my best friends. So, mm-hmm. you know, obviously at that time I was, you know, I was not really ever rooting really against, really against him, but I just yeah. was still cheering him on. You know, I just really wanted to see it at that point because I was out of the tournament. Um, but then we get to 13T and over at Augusta Country Club, still never forget this. Like <laughs> guys were over there hitting their ball over there, like Bill and Joe asking like, yeah, hey, uh, Bill, you, I got a you got a pinnacle over here. Is that what you're hitting? And, and like, just one of the craziest Masters moments of all time just happened on 12. And I'm like, golly, I I just really thought that we would never have like, you know, that ever that would ever happen to where you would ever hear somebody from another golf course in like such a such a defining moment of the championship. So this is Sunday. This that, is that was Sunday. <laughs> this is Sunday, right? Final round of the Masters. And you're going back, you're walking back, you're on 12 green to 13 T and you can hear the other course and they're talking like they're yeah. looking for, <laughs> I think they're looking for a ball. And, and right before that, I make, I had an unbelievable nine iron on 12 to like 15 feet and I make two and clip them by five on the hole. And so we go to 13 T and this is when I knew Jordan and I were going to be really close. He says, walk to the T, he says, me or you. And I was like, in that moment, to have that form of humor and to be able to, you know, have that type of personality, I was like, it is, it's me. <laughs> but, you know, it, I was still hoping that he would be able to still win, um, mm-hmm. even though I was still trying to just, keep, you know, finish top 12 at that point. And I finished bogey, bogey, double, um, or no, double bogey, bogey to shoot nine over where I was sitting at like four or five. So it wasn't like the worst day in the world till I just kind of, just ran out of steam there at the end, but yeah, I don't think I don't ever look back at that day and, and with regret. I look back at that final round of Augusta as as, as being really really close and and as a learning and you cho- chose it at the time to use it as a learning experience. Um, and just because I felt like I was going to be back, I just felt like my um, my game, you know, was in a really good spot. Yeah. Now I think what many people don't know is is because from this point on, then you the injuries start to set in, right? The wrist yeah. starts to set in, but this is something the next week. that was taking place beforehand. Like your rookie season, you were kind of fighting the wrist and then it really got bad after that. So yeah, take us now into that stretch. So it started on Sunday of Augusta. Um, mm. I just remember my, my trainer, Colby Toulier. I'm sure a lot of y'all know uh, Colby trains Justin and all those guys. And he comes up, I'm like, dude, my wrist feels all weird. And he comes up and just does like one of these, like just messes with it. And he's like, I, I think you're good, man. And it didn't feel anything the rest of the day, but it was the first feeling of tendonitis I've ever had in my mm-hmm. wrist. Um, and the next uh, shoot, Wells Fargo, I guess was the next event I would have played. Um, and I get there and I had to withdraw on Monday. And that kind of was the beginning of, of my wrist problems um, where it all started to, you know, it's where it began, I guess. And the golf swing, it started to change, right? Because of the injury of the wrist, which then eventually kind of then the elbow and the forearm started to hurt and yes. the golf swing started to, to change and you started to maybe compensate to some degree. And that's when your struggles began. Is that correct? 
Yeah, you know, over my three years that I was out on tour, I just it never like looked as good as it did my first year on tour, like my golf swing. Mm. Um, and I think I had a lot to do with injuries. And um, I think Tony, my coach at the time, will tell you exactly the same thing. Um, we tried to keep it very organized. Um, and he'll tell you that as well. It's just like injuries were the killer uh, for me. Mm -hmm. And was Tony your coach through college as well? No. So he, as soon as I started getting some, um, getting going, uh, my senior year, uh, I, okay. I started working with him my senior year and then my golf coach at LSU, both the yeah. combination of those two really gave me a lot of, uh, knowledge about the golf swing. So Tony Ruggiero. Yep. Yep. Was, um, your coach at this time. And so what was, where did it start with the ball striking? Was it, was it with the driver? primarily or did it leak into the irons and like what was the miss like what did you start to see i started seeing a right miss okay. where and mainly with the driver because i i used to aim up the right side of the fairway and hit kind of a, a, a pull or like a flatter pull um getting my right side really high coming into the ball and just getting a real low handle and holding the face mm. and, and i would get really open to the target and I never worried about hitting it right. And that was our goal going in to my senior year was just, let's just eliminate. Um, Cause I really had a lot of bad right misses in college. And we we're just like, we're going to eliminate, right. We're going to freaking hit a pole fade and we're just going to get the thing around the golf course and combine that with Tony's um, the way he teaches his pivot really was uh, very, very effective. And when I started getting in trouble was my spine angle was kind of tilting back. And I was trying to get it up in the air, trying to alleviate some wrist pain, um, just basically not being level with my shoulders. And that was causing a lot of like the face still being a little open. And I just wasn't able to get my shoulders uh, rotated enough through the shot. Do you, when you look back and like you've you've watched some of your swings when you were younger and just some of the things that you just said there, like with this kind of backing up to the right. And that's something you hear a lot. This, you know, yeah. just to, in simple terms, right bend. Yes. You know, would be the left shoulder gets taller for a right-handed player. And do you think the attack angle, like early on, like you were mentioning before we came on and thumping the ground so hard, yes. right? Like you're, you're attacking, you were very much down into the ground, thumping it hard. Yeah. That, that right bend would kind of be a decompression, almost shallow out the attack angle to take some of that pressure off the wrist. Yeah, it was supposed to be. And, and cause I really felt like my right shoulder went out a bunch in that, lowering the handle was kept me out of the turf as much but mm. it also it was a steepener as soon as like that right bend got in there i would you know it it just was a very steep motion at um when i started kind of having that left shoulder going up in the air i was just couldn't get out of the turf yeah and and, <laughs> and when you back up with the driver it's right you can <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well i used to just you know i used to always hit in the middle and then i started not releasing the club head. Now I'm hitting it mm. more in the heel. And that's just a, you know, the face just hadn't caught up and that's a, that belt, that ball's going right. <laughs> but, so where did you go from there? Smiley things. Did you, you started to kind of search a little bit, right? Like there was a little a bit number yeah. of teachers that you went, you started to go to like kind of take us through after Tony, the next, you know, chapter of things. Yeah. So I went to Mark Blackburn. He's here in Birmingham. Um, went to him for a little while and at the time, it was, I, I don't think you ever really know you, where you're, and this is at the problem that I had, is I didn't really know where, what direction I was going. I knew I needed help getting control of the golf ball, but I didn't know exactly how far I needed to improve as far as like my swing change. I didn't know I was in a swing change. I didn't know if I needed one, and, and I didn't know how hard it could be, you know, mm -hmm. when, when you've played so well. Um, and Mark gave me some incredible information that at the time really did some really cool things with the golf ball, but was so like different than anything I've ever heard that I just didn't really like feel like changing my like pattern at the time. I just felt like, you know, I, I kind of got this far with this. I really would, if I lose my card, I kind of want to lose it the way that I got here. Mm. Um, and I think that was when you're kind of stuck in that mode a little bit, when you just like, you need to play well, but you also know, you know, it, it's just, you know, you don't have control of that ball. So it's like, mm -hmm. can you make 
whatever you're working with with this new coach, can you make it in your own terms and be able to like mix, mismatch them all? You know what I mean? Does that like, does that kind of make yeah, sense? It's, 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 it's a very tough thing to do. Yeah. It's such good conversation here because, you know, I've, I've heard this a lot, you know, with players of your caliber. And then if you scale it back, even to some degree as an amateur, like you, okay, this is my swing and this has gotten me this far. I know it works. All of a sudden, injury related, the ball's all over the place. You, yeah. You're like, man, I, you know, I, I need to, I know I need to do something. And then all of a sudden, someone like Mark, who's a great coach, he's very informative. Very. And he can come in and say, look, okay, here's what we're going to do A, B, and C. And you're like, wow, that's very different. It's like a new, whole new yeah. feel. And even yeah. though you look at it, you're like, okay, there's a lot of me in there, it, but it's so yeah. different. It's and you're cool. not sure, right? You, you don't have any history with it. And it's tough to kind of commit to that. And you weren't ready probably mentally at that point right. to move over to something that new. Yeah, you're exactly right. That, um, that was the trickiest part. And I think the information I was given was actually been really beneficial to me at the time. Um, mm -hmm. It just, it, you know, and that I've had conversations with Mark about it um, mm -hmm. being here in Birmingham and he's, you know, it, I think he agrees as well, but just at the time, you know, you, you, you wish you could go back and change things and do things different. Um, but, you know, I think that's, that's why I'm here having this conversation is, is to explain everything and explain, you know, this has been an interesting journey, but uh, of things that mm -hmm. I've learned along the way and things, you know, I've been to, I haven't been to a coach yet where I feel like that hasn't tried to help me or mm -hmm. try to get me to go back to where, you know, where I know I can be. Um, yep. And they've, every single person I've been to has given me what I feel to be very knowledgeable information. Um, and I think a lot of people think, well, that, that coach isn't very good. I'm like, well, it just depends on like how you interpret and how, where you're at in your golf swing, how you interpret that information and how, how you can apply it. And that's, that's the hardest thing about coaches is figuring yeah. out who, where exactly are you on this wheel of, you know, in your golf swing. Cause it's really difficult if you're trying to change a motor pattern and you're trying to put it, then put a golf club in your hand. Mm -hmm. So like now we're talking about two things that aren't designed to be done while you're having to think about it, that's when guys are in golf swing mode mm -hmm. or trying to do so many different things. And I've had to hit thousands and thousands of balls to try to change this motor pattern. Um, and it's not easy. It's been very difficult. <laughs> so what had to change as you're going through this path yeah. with your wrist, you're backing up. Did you come to the conclusion of, okay, I know how I used to swing it. So this I, is, yeah, this, but I'll, I got to change this because my wrist elbow combination is not allowing me to do that anymore. So to picture like my golf swing from a, a face on standpoint, um, I then went to um, see John Tillery and mm -hmm. JT's of such a good um, lower body. The first thing he saw with, with my golf swing was that my lower body had no, no movement. Like my knees didn't do anything. Like my pelvis didn't do anything, just super flat. And like, there was just no drive in the golf swing. All I did was basically, he was amazed that I could hit it as well as I could at the time. He's like, you just basically jumped to square the club face up. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess so. That's what I've done. <laughs> and so JT's a one hell of a golf coach. And mm -hmm. he taught me so many different tricks of, from a coaching standpoint of like, I still apply today to so many different things. Um, but I just didn't, I didn't have a hip turn really when I got to him and I had an open club face still. So here I am with an open club face now I'm getting my lower body movement, but as I'm still have this open club face, I still am struggling with getting the thing to square up properly, the club face. So I'm, I'm getting better, um, better movement with my lower body, but I just can't get the face to square up consistently. Even though I did hit it pretty well with JT, I just mm -hmm. knew that something was something that wasn't quite right. And that was kind of where JT and I, um, I was like, Hey man, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, but I'm not quite, I'm not quite there. Um, mm -hmm. And, I, and when, once things kind of go to an end, you just kind of tell them, hey, I did everything I was supposed to do. And um, and JT understood that. And that's yeah. when I kind of moved on to my next venture, my swing stuff. <laughs> and that was who? Uh, my old coach here growing up, Eric Eshelman. We just tried to get the – he was the first one to try to get my face more hooded going back, mm -hmm. which eventually kind of got – I was close to getting wrist angles correct, but still was – I had – 
my left shoulder and like body was staying way too close to the target. So now I got a, a very, sh- you know, a face that's strong enough to be able to just rotate, but I'm still so used to hanging back mm-hmm. that now I got all this throw with a, with a more of a face that's like ready to be hit the golf ball and, and open up like a DJ. And so that's when I was starting to hit it both ways. Okay. <laughs> But it wasn't the wrong information because, like, the face was open. So, what was Eric's last name? Eshelman. Eshelman, yeah. It's all him today. He's still a good friend. So, the club face now is more square. You're using your legs more. Yeah. Change so, knee flex, maybe, even in there. Yeah. So, then, then I go to Scott Hamilton. And Scott Hamilton was probably, like, one of my favorite coaches I've ever had. Um, he gave me all of the right information like that I'm doing now. And I just at the time didn't know how to apply it. Um, my left, my, the first thing he fixed was my pelvis, getting my right, my right pelvis higher or like right leg higher. Mm -hmm. And he also, um, was really trying to get, uh, besides my pelvis, he was really trying to get my, my spine angle to be less tilted to try to hit it straighter and less of a draw pattern. Everything he saw with me was push draw and I'm sitting there trying to hit a straight shot or a fade. So mm-hmm. everything that we try to do is just to get more open. Mm-hmm. And at the time, like he used gears to like, look at, to like really dissect my swing. And I had so much things pushing out to the right in my downswing to where like, you know, I got my head pinned back. I got, um, my, my feet are pushing out to the right, like not opening up. And it's just like, I just still was like stuck. Basically. Yeah. I just couldn't get out of stuck. Yeah. <laughs> and so Did you ever, let me ask you this up, up to this point, right. To the injuries. And now this journey that we're talking about, did you ever think about your golf swing at all? Um, yeah, I was pretty, I always, uh, so you've just, always been kind of, I want to understand what's going on. I was very, I was super like mechanical with my swing when I really started to get going. Cause I didn't, okay. I, I was really aware where my face was mm. and this whole time, this time I've been talking about, I just never knew what the dang face was. Cause I'm trying to figure out, all right, what the face always felt to me was my left wrist. I was like, if I can get my left wrist and face to a line, then that's where I know the face is at. And when I started getting, this is like at this time with Scott, I really got a cupped wrist in transition. Mm. Like I really, my wrist angles, like I used to bow it in coming in when I was playing really well, I would open it up and bow it. And I really had like a cupped wrist. And that's what I struggled with with Scott is I had all the right information and I just had this thing cupped wrist that um, was, you know, really causing all my push draws. And um, did you, so when you let's take a step back with Eric, did you with when you got the club face more shut? Did you do it through the grip, or um, did you, or did you do it through the wrist angle and then? I did it. I did it with my left. I turned my left okay. wrist down on the way back and got my right wrist on top mm-hmm. of it. So I, I, I basically would turn the grip. I would okay. Turn the grip. Um, yeah. And so I would do that, and yeah, and eventually I I went back to just a square face because that felt more comfortable. Right. And because like shut face, I'm like shit. I can't. I mean, I got a two-way miss going with that. That's yeah. not working. <laughs> so yeah. I go back to kind of just like opening the face a little bit and still um, working on the pelvis and um, just getting that hip working. So now I got my low, my, you know, JT got my legs going. Um, Scotty, uh, Scotty H got my hip turn with with my pelvis up. So now my lower body action is getting pretty good. Yeah, like I, it's way better than where it was, which was like stagnant knees. And just Were you like hitting it longer? I, I started to, and yeah. I'll get to the um, where I'm at now with my golf swing because it I'm absolutely hammering the ball now. Um, so from Scotty, yeah. Now we go to I go to VJ Trollio, and he's over in uh, he's he's kind of with that whole gang of uh, with JT, and um, they kind of teach a lot of the same stuff. Um, and, and VJ was a a uh, recommendation from my golf coach at LSU mm-hmm. um, because he just knew him really well. And I was like, man, I just need somebody that will give me the, you know, give me the right information and kind of cheer me on the right way. And and VJ taught me a lot about just body movement with 
the golf swing and when you put it in your hand. And he just was able to help dissect a lot for me. And in the, in the time I was with him, Mm -hmm. um, it didn't quite work out like I was hoping it would, but like still one of my favorite people in the world, his son plays at LSU and, you know, such a big fan of, uh, VJ. He's got some, he just won with Chad Ramey out on tour. Yep. Um, hell of a coach, hell of a, hell of a guy too. Yeah. I just did a, I just did a little piece with Ramey yesterday actually up in yeah, uh, just, RBC. I mean, they, they just do the right things over there at all the way. Really. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me ask you this yeah. before we kind of keep going here past VJ. Yeah. It, did you, cause this is a lot, right? And this is very interesting. You never, yeah. you've never explained this to anyone before like this and no it's been three years so or four yeah. years so so like and of course with me in my mind i'm, I'm tracking with you right and and this is this is a lot to <laughs> kind of take in through this journey though as a player like did you was there like a moment like did you feel like you kind of hit bottom like there's just too much going on i don't know where i'm at um yeah yes and no um i think the hardest thing for me was uh just dealing with these misses on the golf mm. course Cause I think that was the hardest thing was that I just, it would be embarrassing at times. Cause I'm like, God, I just never would hit it like there. And yeah. I was always, I think you just saw a change in like, um, in myself as far as just like my swagger. I used to be just such a swaggerous guy out there and I've just mm-hmm. really struggled, um, with confidence and belief in myself and it's starting to come back, but it's, it, you know, you gotta just, you gotta get through this block phase of, of, the motor pattern changed to where you can yeah. practice random shots and to where, you know, when I would go do my skill development work, it stinks to fail at that skill development part in the past. Cause I'm like, I just can't get through my, I can't get control of just the normal stuff. And that, mm-hmm. I think that was the hardest thing was leaving the golf course thinking like, did I get better today? I don't know. Um, yeah. And I think that I did that for a lot of years, hitting mm-hmm. a lot of balls, a lot of rehab um, and just, you know, luckily I got a great wife and great family, uh, great, great support system. I had an awesome agent, Jimmy Johnston, mm-hmm. listening to me, all my phone calls of like, Hey, what do you think about this? And he's like, ah, yeah. I mean, so he, he would answer and, uh, just kind of be a lifeline so I could talk to somebody other than myself in my own head. <laughs> yeah. Was there, were there some sports psychologists along the way through this journey there, as part of the team? There was probably like four or five. Uh, okay. and you just hope to gather good information because like, that's just, you know, I, I still have information from all those guys that I'm going to use um, here in the next couple of years, as far as, you know, you, you don't unlearn that uh, information. It's just, yeah. can you apply it now? All right. So we've got VJ. So yeah. where are we, we, where are we going from there now? So I went to Todd Anderson down in sea Island and TA and I worked on, getting my left wrist or left arm down. I had a lot of like this, like just pulling of the left arm. And all we try to do is just get my left arm down and rotate my left shoulder. Um, and that's basically, he kept it really dang simple. We worked on maybe some setup stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just didn't, I went to Q school with that this past October and uh, just didn't hit it good. And I was like, I, something ain't quite all right there. Um, mm-hmm. And I was kind of at the end of the road where I'm like, man, this is, I'm tired of this. This, this stinks. Um, and I just happened to like, I've been off social, I've been off social media and I'm just kind of getting back on. Um, but it was, it was hell for a couple of years just with social media. Um, so I was like, I'm out of here. Like this ain't, this ain't it. I don't need people telling me how bad I'm playing. Cause I already know like, and I can't prove them wrong yet. So um and that's when I'd seen that Jeff Smith was in, I think he was working with Davis Riley somewhere in, um, on his Instagram. And I clicked the location, it said Spring Creek, and that's in Memphis. I'm like, shoot, I can drive there. Um, I always saw Jeff's like golf swing teaching on his Instagram. All the guys swing it the same, and which I think is very impressive. Like swing it the same as in like it looked exactly how I'd want my golf swing to look. And why I didn't go to him earlier, I don't know. Uh, I wish I didn't know, but that's kind of, he helped construct um, this swing change starting in October. Um, and it was, it was insane. Just like from start to where we are now and then like where Jeff and I stand and then who's, who's kind of taken the head lead role of, of kind of my day-to-day stuff. Okay. 
let's let's go back to the social media for a second. Um, you said you got off it for right two or three years. Yeah, and um, you know, people like you are like you've got the swag, right? And people were warming up to you, and like you had sponsors back in your day, and and doing very well. Baker's Bay, the spring break was was awesome content, right? And your guys' social media was taken off, you and Ricky and JT and Spieth, and it was it was great content. I remember like it oh, was yeah. yesterday. And so you're you're you know you're playing great and you're stardom and then you know obviously everything we've been talking through you're struggling and then all of a sudden you know like you said people are telling you man come on smiley you play play better and this and that and like did that did that affect you to, to the point where that wasn't helping the process and yeah, the confidence yeah, it, and all that to the point that you, you had to you had to turn it off. It was really hard, you know. I I think it there was just a lot of like big big accounts that were like had like found you know use me as like the the new bad of golf of like just being bad. And mm. they the thing is that I, they weren't wrong. I mean, and if I if I felt any different about it, you know, I just for a while, I let it bother me too much. Um, and I think, you know, you, you're you used to people like talk, you know, if they're going to talk bad about you, they talk around, you know, around your back, you know, mm -hmm. you're not used to like seeing it with your own eyes. Like, you know, it, it's just a different form of kind of, um, of bullying, if you will. You know, I'd, I'd rather if, if you're going to tell me I suck, please tell me in my face, you know, like mm -hmm. that's at least I can handle it. But I think for a while that it it kind of, it took me a, a good year to really get over just the fact that, um, the social media part of it, it just, it tore me up. Um, mm -hmm. it wasn't fun. Um, and then when I see it, what happened with the guys today, I'm like, I, I just know exactly what they're going through. Um, it's just not fun, but you know, I think it only helped me though, kind of find like who I am as a person and that golf isn't everything. Um, I think that's been the biggest, um, change for my my life is like how fine I am not playing golf but I love it so much and I care about it so deeply because I work at it every day I wouldn't care I wouldn't be still doing this um but that I think just having such a good fam or you know base here at home and I just feel like this journey is just you know God's timing for this has just been uh crazy so I just keep at it man keep the belief yeah I was gonna be my next question but I think you just answered it that you know, wow. I mean, why do you keep going down this path? Right. Cause I mean, the perseverance and the dedication and the commitment here, year in, year out, every one of these teachers that we've mentioned, um, the reason Maybe. is you love this. I mean, the game is, yeah, is it who you are, right? I mean, that's not who you are, but it's, it's a big part of Smiley Kaufman. Yeah, it is. And I, I just love this game and, um, I know I can play it at a high level, um, again, it's just, it's just been a long, long road to do it, I guess. And if I didn't still believe in myself, I still wouldn't be doing it. And I, I still think I can do it. Um, yeah. so that, yeah, other than that, it's just been, you know, just keep the belief and keep surrounding myself with awesome, you know, good team around me. And I think, you know, the, all of the coaches I've been to in the past, like I mentioned, like I love every single one of them. And I really felt like they all, you know, poured themselves into me to try to, um, try to get to back to where I want to get to. And that's all you can ask for in, in a coach. Yeah. You know, there, there, there's a lot of great coaches in today's game. I just saw a lot of them this week up in Hilton Head and how hard they work, the dedication. They, they put their life into it. I mean, they're, you know, they're not the player like you. They're not hitting the shot, but, man, do they care. And, and you know, 12, 13 hours a day. I saw – I remember seeing John Graham, a putting coach, yeah. Who's helping JT right now? Yeah, I saw him. Um, I saw him and I, I remember seeing him one year at the players, and it was seven o'clock in the morning, and he's standing there on the putting green by himself. I think it was six forty-five. I said, "Hey, John, I went over. I talked to him, and I've known John forever." And he goes, "Yeah, I've got so and so coming out. This is a few years back. I got so and so coming out, and okay, so you know he's working, and I'm doing my thing, and then it's like eleven o'clock, and he's going out on the golf course, and." And it was like, I, I come back, I, I doing my thing. And I went to a party smiling. I've already had a couple beers. I'm walking back and it's like five 30 at, at night and he's standing on the putting green. <laughs> and I'm like, John, please tell me you at least took time to eat some lunch. Right. 
oh yeah, I got, I got a little bit of lunch, but so-and-so's coming out. We're going to putt and go play nine holes. I mean, this is all day, yeah. every day. You know, these guys, they care, you know, and, and he looked just the same, same energy fired up because they deeply care about their players. So it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and I know that's how Tillery is. You know, I just saw John yesterday, walked a couple holes with them with Sepp Straka. Um, I know that's how Blackburn is. I saw him on the range. I know that's how Hamilton is. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't know VJ okay. very well or, um, or Tony. I mean, I know Tony a little bit. I mean, I know they're, you know, look, they're, they're all in, right? They, they want you guys to succeed. So, and I know this how Jeff Smith is too. And Jeff's a very talented teacher. And I want to pull this swing up because I know you are, um, you're, you're in a, um, you're in a good spot right now, aren't you? You're hitting the ball. Do you feel like right now when I pull this swing up and this is a swing, you know, fairly recent and you feel like you're in a good spot right now and hitting the ball, would it be fair to say the best you have in quite some time? Yeah, a, a thousand percent. The biggest change that we've made um, has been, well, first, like at the beginning of the year to take, you know, where it started is I went out to, uh, out to Palm Springs, the very beginning of the year, and just kind of like took all the information from our first lesson and said, I'm going to go figure out what, you know, what, what works and what doesn't work. And the main thing that he gave me was one of those, um, the God, it's like the, you put it on top of the club and it, it helps promote good wrist angles. Um, mm -hmm. the hanger, I believe. Yep. yep. So the hanger, uh, we put that on the club cause he's like, all right, you got to get some, uh, left wrist flexion. Cause like I got a couple left wrists on the way back and he's like, you got to find a way to get some more flexion in that left, that, um, that lead wrist. And so I go do that for a little while and it feels different. feels weird. You know, I've never rotated with my left shoulder out of the top. I've had to wait on the golf club, time it up and then lower the handle through the shot. So the main, um, thing that I learned was like, all right, give me that left wrist flexion and give me, we're getting a deeper right shoulder. So we're getting, it's called right shoulder abduction, I guess is the term. Mm -hmm. And that's giving me more hand depth, which is a big thing for Jeff, how he teaches. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten my right hip to rotate and stand up a little bit to kind of delay the pelvis and its rotation and the downswing to kind of get up back up on the left side again. Um, and basically I said basically twice, uh, I'm trying to get more shallow in transition with just rotating my left left shoulder out of the way. So mm -hmm. instead of being steep right out the gate and in transition, we're trying to get that, you know, we're trying to feel like the club head, the, the center of mass stays back behind me. And I go that right arm stays in more of an external. Um, none of these terms of men, I make sense to anybody, but um, as long as it makes sense to me. Uh, <laughs> And I just ripped it out of there, man. And um, I'm hitting the crap out of it right now, hitting it hard. Um, I changed all so my irons too. That's another thing that um, mm. my my equipment. I was playing a half inch long irons with a couple of degrees upright, and now I'm playing standard length irons that are flat, like just straight flat. So that's been a huge change, having the right arrows um, mm -hmm. as well. That is that is made this whole swing change easier. And I, and I switched and set up to an overlap grip. I went to an interlock grip and I changed that at the beginning of the year because I could not flex my lead wrist in an overlap position. I just could not make it move. So that's been a so, big, big deal. So you can see the change in knee flex, right? If I pull this swing up, this was from a couple years ago and this is where probably 2020. Um, yeah, I think so. And right. we were to take it to the top here you would like, you can see your, your pelvis is more level, your right yep. knees more flexed. Yep. And probably a little more extension in the left wrist. Yep. Um, it's going to so be steeper in transition too. A little steeper in transition because of the extension in the yep. lead wrist and, you know, still that aggressive shoulder turn. You, you've got a lot of mobility in the thoracic spine. I'm sure you've probably heard that before. Yeah, no, I can, I'm, uh, I'm Gumby, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so here's now, okay. So now here's the change in E-flex, right? So you take it up to the top and these are some of the things that you've kind of been carrying with you. And I'm sure Jeff liked that, but yeah, 
yeah, but a different sure. left wrist position, more flexed, um, club face kind of matching up to the lead arm. And yeah. And and then from there, like, okay, so if it is flexed and the face is good and you got a little change of knee flex where the, the right side of the pelvis is higher, you, you felt like, okay, now I can kind of maybe leave it alone, let it pitch back behind me and rotate. Yeah. So for me, it feels like I stay, I just keep, cause like I used to wag my wrist. Like I used to like, um, Jeff would say like, yeah, you wag your wrist and then you would throw. Um, so now I'm just trying to, once I get to the top, I just basically feel like I maintain my wrist angles and the club head stays behind me. My right arm is, is not being thrown out. It's, it's staying like in this, mm-hmm. uh, side bend. I don't know if that's the right term. Like, feel like more this way. Yeah. It's like my right from down the line. It looks like my right arm is staying on my inseam of my shirt. Yeah. Like it's getting. Yeah out underneath to where from there it's like um i can just keep rotating do you feel like do you feel like because you said something earlier that you as you were going through some of these things with the change of knee flex and some of the other stuff that you were that you were doing that you really didn't know where the face was do you feel like you do you know where the face is with this yeah yeah it took a while though it definitely took a while um yeah i definitely know where the face is now i'm hitting it way better um you know i just i've played not very many events and every event I've gone to, I just feel like I've been cramming, like you cram for a test, man. And it's just hard to play golf that way. Yeah. Um, so just kind of getting, I've spent about two months since Puerto Rico, just, um, just doing this every day. Yeah. Well, good. I mean, it's, it, you know, you can certainly, you can, you can see the changes and, and man, you've been through a lot. And I would imagine, I would imagine at some point, like a sports psychologist or someone, in your camp has looked at you and said, all right, you got to, you got to settle in now. Yeah. That's where we're at now. <laughs> and you got to just own it. Right. And be instinctive and self-discover and yeah. you know, off you go. So uh, Jeff Smith was, you know, he's, he told me when I texted him that he doesn't have, he doesn't have time for him. Like he's got a big rotation of guys on tour. And I was like, he was like, I can get you in, you know, we can kind of get you going. And he, you know, he's kind of helped me along the way. And, um, you know, it got to a point where I'm like, I just need a little bit more, you know, somebody mm-hmm. else to help me a little more hands on. And, yeah. um, his assistant, Jonathan fly who played golf at Auburn and Memphis, uh, teaches with him out at spring Creek. And he's kind of been taking the weed role, uh, of just, and he's, you know, he's a, a good friend now. He's very easy to communicate with. And we're both on the same page of, Hey, we're just going to play golf now. Cause that's what I'm, I know I can go do, um, and we're just basically doing a way more random practice and just playing golf. Yeah. So it's getting closer. Yeah, it's getting way closer. Making a bunch yeah. of birdies. Uh, awesome. Putting good, chipping good. Uh, just, uh, man, I just got to keep at it. So what's the rest of the uh, what rest of the year look like now for you? So doing, man, probably PGA Tour Mondays. Um, exemptions have been tough. That's the other thing on the web um, for the last couple of years. They had like, you know, they were selling spots left and right. Um, to to sponsor, like, I don't know if you are aware of any of that. You're now on the web, and this isn't to say I deserve any spots or anything on the web, just saying that it's been very difficult to get spots on the web because of tournament directors selling spots to the highest bidder. And that mm-hmm. hurt me for a little while because I just felt like, you know, I, I could have gotten some spots, but, um, you know, sponsor exemptions are tough. So it, mm-hmm. for me, it's just getting getting back into an you know, if it's on the corn ferry Monday in and then playing the rest of the year or getting into the web finals being just top 200, um, you know, that's the main goal. Yeah. Well, I like where you're at. It looks good. It's amazing how, you know, you go back to, and I know you're good friends with all these guys and Baker's Bay, but man, you're all working. Like there's a lot of thinking going on with <laughs> and his swing and Ricky with his swing, geez, I guess I sit around the dinner table. I could just sit there and listen to that all day and yeah. all kinds of stuff being thrown around. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan and I used to hash it out and just about with whatever. You know, he's 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 not like you don't have to peel Jordan back. He'll tell you exactly how he's feeling with um, where he's at in his golf game, where Ricky's a little bit more like an onion, kind of he's a little tougher to kind of get um, where he's at with, you know, how he feels about things. But yeah. I love them all for their for, for every reason in the book. Yeah, where JT's playing really dang good. I could see him winning very soon. I watched him play Saturday at Augusta, and it was freaking impressive. <laughs> yeah, well, he was. Uh, well, I mean, 
he got the he got the short end of the stick at the players with the with the draw. Yeah, that was like so good to to be where he was at. And of course, the the Friday round at the Masters was phenomenal. Um, yeah, it, it seems it does seem close for him that you know yeah, win sure. is, is, is near. Um, but you know, Smiley, hey, this has been this has been fascinating. I I really appreciate you. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, this um, has been good for you. You know, like it's it. I've been needing to do this for a while, and it, you know, it's yeah. been you know, I think it's almost good therapy to kind of get it all out and um and it's been good for me i'm thank you for having me on i i've been looking for somewhere to do um a media or some story about um not necessarily about my journey just more about like explain yeah. what i've been doing and like what <laughs> it's just kind of it, it's so difficult to explain if it weren't for someone like you that can understand yeah. the terminology know all these people no i'm not dogging on anybody everybody knows mm-hmm. that um i i anybody that i've worked with that, that they've uh, meant a whole lot to me so and that well that I, I think you know it seems like you're in a good of, spot a you know keep too. grinding dig in and like you know now it's just you just start building some confidence right you see the ball going yeah. out of the window you want to see it you know your short game's elite and so now you just get the driver in play you get the irons going yeah, where you sure. want a little confidence off you go Hey, watch out, man. I was number one in putting in Puerto Rico. Can you imagine if I was tw- uh, 100th? <laughs> <laughs> Smiley Coffin, man. I, I can't thank you enough for joining us here on the podcast. My man. Thank you, brother. See you down the road.